Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 182, Visual Patterns, the secret weapon for teaching math practice standards. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the Recovering Traditionalist and BuildMathMinds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Have you ever wished for a single activity that could transform how your students think about mathematics? Well, today, we're diving into one of those. So before we hop into the episode, I wanted to tell you we're doing a special thank you for anyone who's been watching the episodes, listening, and who's on my email list as we move towards this holiday season and teachers have a little bit of a break. Now, I'm not saying you have to, but for some people, they do take some time to catch up on some professional development that they've been wanting to do. So if you are one of those people Go to buildmathminds.com slash special because that will give you access to the Build Math Minds PD site for $1 for 10 days. If you like the site and you enjoy having access to all of the professional development videos, the resources, like all of these routines that I've been sharing with you. Uh, You also get access to all the past virtual math summits. We have had seven years of virtual math summits at this point in time. You will get access to all of this for 10 days for $1. If you decide that you don't like it, you can cancel at any time before your 10 days. If you don't, then your membership of $39 a month will start after those 10 days. So this is limited time. We will have this offer up through the first of the year. Um, So if you wanna take advantage of some downtime doing some professional development, then go to buildmathminds.com slash special. If not, enjoy your downtime doing the things that you love. All right, let's get into this week's episode. In the last few episodes, we've been talking about something fundamental in mathematics education, which is helping students truly see the structure behind numbers and relationships. Visual patterns by Fan Wen are another of my favorite math activities that directly support standards of mathematical practice number seven, look for and make use of structure. However, they also help students engage in all the math practices. So what exactly are visual patterns? Imagine a sequence of images where each subsequent image builds upon the previous one in a predictable yet engaging way. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, you're gonna see some examples right over here. (laughs) These aren't just pretty pictures. They're mathematical puzzles that are just waiting to be solved and you can access them all for free. Now here's why visual patterns are truly a game changer for elementary mathematics. First off, they intuitively invite kids to problem solve. Instead of abstract numbers, students are presented with these visual sequences that just naturally invite curiosity. A pattern might start with like three squares and then it grows to six squares and then nine, challenging students to predict the next iteration. This isn't just counting, it's getting them to reason and look at the structure that's happening. All right, the second reason is that kids are seeing the concrete representation of abstract concepts. Visual patterns really transform very complex math concept into something tangible. Now you don't have to go as, Uh, complex and abstract as you could with these patterns like with high schoolers. But basically you're helping students see how a pattern is growing and they're not just like memorizing these rules. They're actually understanding the underlying mathematical structure of what's happening with these numbers. And talking about complexity, we're really scaffolding this complexity. Fawn Wynn's approach really allows teachers to start simple and gradually increase complexity. A pattern might begin with like linear growth 
and then introduce more nonlinear progressions that really challenge students to look deeper and have them create equations to represent the change. But as I said before, in the elementary grades, you could really just use the images given to get students to describe the pattern and then use that to describe or build the next visual pattern in the sequence. Math practice number seven, look for and make use of structure, is all about seeing beyond the immediate of what's in front of you. It's about recognizing that mathematical relationships aren't random. That's what I love about it. It's predictable. There's meaningful patterns. Visual patterns are the perfect activity to help elicit this kind of thinking with your students. When a student looks at a sequence and asks, how did those shapes change? What stayed the same? What's different? That's true mathematical thinking in action. That's not just solving a problem just for the sake of solving it. They're really analyzing because they're curious and they want to understand the mathematical structure that's happening. And honestly, that's really just the beginning because visual patterns really do engage your students in all the standards of mathematical practice. So standard one, which is make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. When students see a sequence of growing shapes, they're naturally motivated to figure out that underlying question of what's gonna be next. But it's not just about getting that next answer. It really is about understanding why and how the pattern works. Standard number two is reason abstractly and quantitatively. And that comes alive when students move beyond just simply counting the shapes that are in the, the pattern. They start to see the relationships between the position and the quantity that's there and how it's growing. And like I mentioned before, a pattern might show like three squares, then six squares, and then nine squares. We need to help students learn to translate that visual information into mathematical expressions. Math practice number three, which is construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Now, visual patterns are a great way to build collaboration and get your students talking about mathematics. Imagine students discussing the different ways to describe how a pattern grows, defending their thinking, and then challenging each other's in interpretations, okay? It's such a powerful way to do that. Using visual patterns can also help you with math practice four, model with mathematics, because what they're seeing mathematically is becoming con concrete. They're not just solving an abstract problem, they're creating a mathematical model of this visual problem in front of them. Math practice number five, which is use appropriate tools strategically, comes into play as students choose how to represent that pattern. Are they gonna use some kind of a table? Will they build a model? Are they just gonna verbally describe it? Each approach requires some strategic thinking about what tool will work best and really resonates with their own understanding. Math practice six, attend to precision, becomes crucial when students start describing pattern growth. They learn the importance of exact language, precise measurements, and clear mathematical communication. And then finally, the last math practice, number eight, which is look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. As students work with these multiple patterns, they start to recognize broader mathematical principles. They see how patterns repeat, how growth can really be predicted, how they can use what they're seeing to help them make those predictions, and how mathematical thinking can really be generalized. Fawn Wynn's visual patterns aren't just another math activity. <laughs> They're a comprehensive approach to mathematical thinking that touches on every single standard of mathematical practice. And here's the best part for teachers. These activities require minimal preparation. It's free, pick a pattern, and let your students start exploring. All right, until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math keep questioning them about their thinking, and most importantly, keep building math minds.